Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. Let's talk eight couch co-op games for the NES that you must play today. You must play them now because they are so much fun. If you haven't checked them out before, you need to check them out. This isn't gonna be like a countdown or anything or like the greatest. I'm just talking about eight couch co-op games that I really, really enjoy. Awesome titles for the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System, which as you guys know, I'm a big fan. I've written a couple of books about the NES including the NES Omnibus Volume 1, which you can get today. And the NES Omnibus Volume 2 is currently on Kickstarter and it's doing really well. Thank you guys so much for supporting that. I really, really appreciate it. It is awesome. So let's get to it. Eight couch co-op games for the NES that you need to play now. And if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It is super helpful. So this is one I'm gonna just cover briefly because you guys know all about it and it's talked about it again and again, but it's worth mentioning. Contra, amazing game. I'm glad I have my original boxed copy that I got back when it came out. Love this game, it's fantastic. Now I typically play one player on this because I, I tend to do better, I get further in the game, but it is fun to play with another player if that player is good at the game. If the player is bad at the game, if you've got a friend that's casual gamer or not good at platform shooters or whatever, you kind of might want to just play one at a time, but it's a fantastic uh, co-op game if your other player is on an equal skill level as you. And you can, it's actually kind of an advantage. I've talked to a lot of people that just really, you know, they can't beat the game or get very far by themselves, but having another player with them uh, they enjoy that and personally I would rather play this by myself, but I know a lot of you guys enjoy this as couch co-op So boom, there's Contra Next up is the original Mario Brothers as it says right on there on the box the original Mario Brothers I love this game and I hate when people call Super Mario Brothers Mario Brothers because it devalues this game and just confuses things But this is Mario Brothers. This is one of the greatest two-player games of all time uh, in my opinion um, and you can play you can cooperate or you compete you can bump into each other you can knock each other other you know into enemies uh, you can sabotage each other you know one player is Mario the other is Luigi because it is the brothers and uh, you're jumping on platforms you're bumping uh, these creatures over and then knocking them over to score points you're grabbing coins you got bonus rounds it's an amazing game so back in the day my friend Johnny and I would play this at the arcade back in 1983 when it came out I was 16 he was 14 I had a car so we would drive to the mall and we would play Mario Brothers and we would crack up so hard at this game I don't think I've ever laughed more during a game than I have playing Mario Brothers love this game and it's an amazing port on the NES. Now it is missing a couple of things. Um, there's no cutscenes. It seems like home console games, the cutscenes are gone so often, like with Donkey Kong. Uh, but Mario Brothers, the uh, cutscenes are missing. They've been removed. And the programmers, you know, they just figure that's not crucial. Uh, the en enemies have a little bit simpler animations. The fireballs are smaller. You know, just some nig you know, nibbly, <laughs> just some nitpicky little things. Uh, one thing of note, the falling icicles, they are not in this version and they're missing from most home version except for Atari 8-bit computer uh, version that does have the falling icicles, which is interesting. It does have the slip ice, the little ice creatures that come out and smooth out and make the platform slippery. So it does have the slip ice, so that's cool. It is a great port. It plays extremely well. It looks great. And, you know, if you haven't really spent a ton of time with the arcade version, you're really not going to notice the difference as much. Mario Brothers, excellent couch co-op. And uh, it is more fun to sabotage each other than it is to cooperate. I'm just saying. If you want to advance in the game, just play it by yourself. All right, so next up is Guerrilla War. This is like a top-down shooter, like a run and gun. This is an amazing game. I bought this complete copy just uh, for just... $12 in the box for Mad Gear. Maybe you guys know Mad Gear from setting up at a lot of shows across the country, a great vendor. I uh, bought it for 12 bucks a few years ago. Now I've looked it up on eBay, complete copies like this one are around 60 bucks or so. So I'm glad I got it when I did. It is faster than the 1987 SNK arcade game. And you're just, you know, it's a commando type game where you're running and gunning, there's jungles, rivers, sewer cities. You're throwing grenades, you're shooting, you got flamethrowers. And like Frontline, which I used to play on the ColecoVision a lot, um, you can get in, into a tank and drive around and shoot. It is awesome. Um, 
There's a minecart bonus round. That's not like Donkey Kong Country. It is a top-down minecart bonus round. Great game, Guerrilla War, highly recommend it. One of the lesser known games, you know, compared to Mario Brothers or Contra, it's a, a little bit of a hidden gem in the NES library. It's a great two-player game. Next up is Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. Now, great beat-em-up. Unlike the original Double Dragon, which I do enjoy thoroughly, this one actually maintains the two-player simultaneous mode from the arcade game. So Double Dragon was a disappointment for the NES because they took out the two-player main game and you're just fighting it alone. Double Dragon 2 The Revenge, it does have um, two-player co you know, simultaneous. I love it. As many of you know, Billy and Jimmy Lee go through punching, kicking, using weapons, fighting gangs, ninjas, giant mutant warriors, and other enemies. And it's a little different than the arcade game. The levels have been uh, redesigned, and cutscenes were actually added to the home version. How about that? Pretty cool. Next up is a Joust clone called Balloon Fight. I mean, it's very similar to Joust, except you control a balloonist instead of a space ostrich, and you fly around and you bump into other enemies, and if you're above the enemy a little bit, uh, that's the way to beat them. You pop their balloons uh, to get them to fall down. And it's interesting, this game is so similar to Joust. It could easily just be, you know, just tossed aside as a clone, but there's just something about the graphics and the subtle differences, and there's a side-scrolling, uh, mode uh, with where you dodge lightning. Just these things make it di just different enough from Joust to where it just really doesn't absorb the ridicule of a lot of clones. It, it just stands alone as a great game and I absolutely love it. It's one of the legendary black box titles like Mario Brothers, early release for the NES. Just a fantastic game and I've never heard anyone say they don't like this game. I mean, like I said, it's so much like Joust. There's even fish at the bottom of the screen instead of the troll of the lava pits, you know, that'll yank you out of the sky like in, uh, in Joust, the troll will get you. Fish here do the same thing. Again, it's so similar to Joust, but it just seems to be a great game on itself. I love it. Now, speaking of Joust, it was created for the NES, and this is a very nice port of the arcade game. Um, came out in the arcade classic, came out in 1982, and I played a ton of Joust in the arcades, and I got pretty darn good at it. And um, you do press the button repeatedly to flap your wings, and that can get tiring. Um, and when you bump into an enemy, you know, your, uh, your lance has to be above the enemy a little bit to, to, to defeat him. And it turns the enemy to an egg, and you go down and grab that egg. And Joust, the home version for the NES, it does have intro music, which is kind of interesting. And um, you, probably, you guys probably didn't buy your NES to play Joust or Millipede or Bump and Jump or any number of the old, you know, classic arcade ports for the NES. But it's so cool that they're on there. I really like that a lot. Uh, so that Joust, awesome. Next up, second to the last one, is Gauntlet 2. Hey, don't have the box, but at least I've got the instruction manual there. Now, Gauntlet 2, um, it's based on, now, the 80, 1986 arcade game, which I really don't recall seeing back in the day, but I did play the original 1985 Gauntlet, and I absolutely loved that. Now, that was not the first four-player game. Gauntlet wasn't. There were some racing games and some Pong variants and things that were four-player, but it was mind-blowing because it just looked like it... Picture this, 1985, I'm going into my local mall where I spent a whole lot of time back in the day. And, you know, I'm going in to play, you know, maybe some Asteroids or some Centipede or some Mr. Do, my favorite game, some Dig Dug. And I see this game called Gauntlet and there's four people around it. And I'm hearing these really interesting voice effects. Uh, and I'm just like, wow, this is really cool. This is really different. And, um, you know, they're walking around shooting and they're advancing, they're going through mazes and advancing, you know, they just keep, it just keeps going on and on. I was like, wow, this looks great. So that was very memorable to see uh, Gauntlet for the first time. And you'll talk a lot of, to older gamers that remember seeing Gauntlet for the first time. It really stood out as an unusual multiplayer game. Now the original Gauntlet for the NES does not have the four player mode like the arcade version. It's just two player max. Um, but Gauntlet 2 does have all four players. It supports four players with the NES satellite, with the multi-tap adapter, and that is freaking awesome. Gauntlet 2 is a fun game, but it does 
tend to go on a while. You definitely want to play this with at least two players because it's a lot more fun to go through it together. It's easier that way because it can be a challenging game, but it's just a lot more fun to talk and laugh and just have a great time together. Now, it does retain the four player from the, co uh, from the coin op, like I said. It also retains the voice effects like Wizard Needs Food Badly, which has become an iconic voice effect in Gauntlet. Uh, Gauntlet 2 does retain the voice effects and the original Gauntlet port for the NES does not, which is a big absence from that game. Now the voice effects are a little scratchy in Gauntlet 2, but hey, you know, for the, the NES version, but oh well, still cool to have them. And last but not least is Double Dribble. I've spent more time playing Double Dribble than any other basketball game other than the NBA Jam series. Double Dribble is awesome. It's a great two-player game. It's fun. I love the close-up dunk animations. And it was especially fun back in the day, you know, when it was new and exciting and, you know, things like NBA Street and NBA Jam haven't surpassed it. Great game. I love it. One time my cousin came over and I've got a great uh, story to play the game back in the 80s. A great story in the NES Omnibus about that. Uh, he came over with his girlfriend at the time and we were hanging out in the living room talking to my parents and stuff. Well, him and I went back and played some double dribble, leaving his girlfriend in there awkwardly talking to my parents, which I don't think she was thrilled about. But anyway, story on that is in the NES Omnibus. So there's eight must play co-op games for the NES Couch Co-op. Let me know in the comments, what are your go-to Couch Co-op games for the NES? Thanks again for supporting me on, pa on Patreon. Uh, thanks for subscribing to the channel, and thank you so much for backing the NES Omnibus Volume 2 on Kickstarter. I really appreciate it. In a link to this video, you can back me on Kickstarter, Patreon, and all that good stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We will talk to you in another video.